a 701 at 4,000 words. No, it was a, a 701 at 4, no, it was only two. Willis Ware and Paul Armour. Mm. Well, Christ's sake, uh, I but anyway, know. I've forgotten how much the 701 has it changed so much, but it finally ended up with, uh, I think, a thousand bits of two, two thousand. I think it ended up with two thousand bits, two thousand words. 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 But you recall, we originally had had uh, planned to have two memory frames per machine, yeah. so I think it could have had four thousand. But instead, they put just two thousand. Twenty forty-eight. On one frame. Yeah. Word, yeah. 10 digit words. Maybe, maybe you can answer this. Didn't we ship some with two frames, two memory frames? No, we never did. Uh, never did. <clears throat> okay. And what that caused me a big problem because I had a big surplus of parts left over <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the program. Okay. Now well, we, uh, I, very quickly we found that 1040 would work in the test for in, in a certain sense, just as well as 512. In a certain sense, <laughs> von Neumann was right. And if you look at a, if you look at a modern computer with a much larger memory than this, if it's a high performance computer, it still has a thousand word cache, which is much faster. Uh -huh. In other words, the cache memory uh, uh, pro provides uh, the instant support for the arithmetic process for the for the for the arithmetic processor, and uh, and and the and the memory. Now, what you think of as, as as being the random access memory, and I was just backing up the cache, and and the way von Neumann was thinking about it, he would have applied his same conclusion today, not 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 to the big memory that backs up the cache, but to the cache itself. And so, I, I mean, he, he, he saw things very clearly, but he saw them from his own point of view. And mm -hmm. his own point of view was that the decision uh, was made by he was incredibly brilliant. Mistaken. He was able to think incorrect. through things that the rest of us would quickly think through things that the rest of us would take a long time to get through, if ever. And uh, so he thought of programmers being as bright as he and much more patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what about the uh, issue of... Um, uh, general purpose versus uh, special purpose designs uh, was that was that one that on which there was a continuing uh, sharp difference of opinion you mean complete machines or systems well obviously you went to the general purpose machine the 360 was sure uh, was for everything but uh, where was there within the company a continued group that thought that's really the wrong way to go, that you ought, you ought to be yes. designing machines in terms of their function, yes. in terms of the ultimate yes. product. Yes. And, you know, the, the big, the big uh, argument there was in the scientific computation area, yeah. the people that wanted a 48-bit machine. Yeah, uh, but, it, but that's still, still a rather general thing. I was thinking of even more specific, a machine that was a weather-oriented machine, a machine that was a... No, not that. Uh, and look, even even the other, you see, compiling had gotten to be a very big thing. Yeah. By the early '60s, and if you're doing compiling of a Fortran language program, that's really more like a business operation, you know. Yeah. In other words, business. Business and commercial customers were doing things that looked like scientific computing more and more, and the engineering and scientific computing people were doing things that looked more and more like business as time went on. And so if you try to make a machine that's focused too heavily on a specialty, you find out that you've had to defocus it in certain other areas where that guy is interested as well. Now, I suppose what you could do is sell him a whole bunch of special purpose machines, mm. each focused on a different area, you know, a machine for compiling, a machine for running, a machine, you know, but uh, I think the, that the, the test of time has proved that the more general purpose machines are, are, uh, are the thing. Oh yeah. Now there the only place where that's still not so really is in the biggest number crunches. You know, in the computing business, yep. there's always been the saying, no matter how big a machine you say you can build, I can always find a worthwhile problem that'll require a bigger one. Yeah. Okay? And so I suppose the very top end of the technical computing, et cetera, uh, uh, <coughs> area will always justify 
cray-like machines, you know. Yeah. What what what's going on now though is uh, in, in the IBM line is uh, to deal with that question is to have an attached processor mm -hmm. uh, that is what you have as a, as a main computer which is a general purpose machine and uh, and you need the general purpose machine because if you if you produce a, a huge calculation that takes enormous enormous amount of multiplying and adding and subtracting the report still has to be fancy with, le with titles and page numbers and all those things that uh, yes. uh, and so uh, but and you but, still want to tie terminal to it and, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. and so so the idea is you, you you attach a vector processor to it which can really do vector multiplication in a hurry yeah and uh, and then you get the best of both worlds in one package yeah the big arguments today I would guess center around parallelism again yes uh, and you know I'm kind of out of that I, yeah. uh, uh, if I had to guess I would guess that the traditional notion of parallelism is probably not going to work this has nothing to do with history we're conjecturing about the future yeah. at this yeah. point uh, let me give you a, a little example early in the days of the TPM one of Nat's people was assigned the job of taking a 407 that had been plugged, you know, 407 had a double plug board, had been plugged in a relatively short time to do a certain business problem having to do with pay, uh, social security payroll deductions or something like that. And but just just for the people watching the tape, a 407 is it's a... It's an accounting machine, a yeah. printing accounting right. machine. Punch card. 1950. Yes. And you use the plug board. 1950 vintage sort of. Yeah. Right. What an accounting machine does is to add up numbers and produce subtotals and grand totals. Uh, yeah. and, and, and print. Yeah. And, First uh, and, then, and then you have yeah. a sorter that sorts the things in a different order. And you run, run them through the... Uh, accounting machine and print again. And the first time you print uh, sales distributed by geographically, and the second time you print sales distributed by sales office and salesman, right. and the third time you buy by product. You see, so, I mean, this is this sure. is this is how business is done: is to get this data. Right. Okay. okay. So now the job became to take this plug board, which is a yes. fairly simple job, and to program it on the 702. Mm -hmm. Well, the program turned out to be that long, and it took you know two three days to do and and so forth. So there are certain things that you can do with a plug board and with one of these punch card accounting machines in a very, very simple form that a serial logic von Neumann type machine is tortured to duplicate. Mm -hmm. It can be like, obviously like a Turing machine can do anything. It can yes. duplicate it. Yes. Now, okay, you come back, you know, is parallel processing the way to go. I'm going to guess that it probably is not. That to the degree that a 407 accounting machine was parallel processing, maybe. But parallel processing in the form of breaking the problem into little parallel elements, no, I don't think so. I think that for, for instance, like these, these attached processors that do partial, you know, Fourier transforms and, and differential equations and the like are probably the more reasonable way to go, where you're essentially working on a matrix at a time or something like that. Not quite parallel processing, but more parallel than what yeah. a serial logic machine would be. Yeah. I have two more two more things to bring Please. up that I, that I think we shouldn't miss. Okay. Uh, one one is uh, I described the uh, uh, the uh, magnetic tape project that led to, led to all these computers and to our conclusion uh, that to use magnetic tapes you had to have a computer. Yes. Not everybody bought that idea ah. naturally in IBM. IBM, for any idea that's, that's, that's being advocated in IBM, you can find somebody that's pretty strong that's against it. Yeah. Uh, and so the people thought that computers were really too complicated, unnecessary, you know, driving a tack with a sledgehammer. Uh, and so You've, you've heard the series 701, 702, yes. 705, uh, 704, 705. The 703 is, mi 703 is missing. Is missing? Yep. Okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> there was one. 703 yes. was, uh, was, was the last attempt by the non-computer people to survive in the computer world. Wow. Uh, uh, that'd be a little thick. <laughs> it was really quite a computer. 
The 703 was a very special purpose electronic processing, tape processing machine. Very special purpose. And when Nat says, supported by a computer, I'm going to put words in his mouth and say, I think what he means is supported by a general purpose computer. Right. Okay? Because, believe me, this 703 had a lot of circuits in it, as many circuits as you would have needed for a computer, but right. they were highly special purpose. Yeah. And so it, it, it worked pretty much like an old-fashioned uh, uh, punch punch card system, except it had magnetic tape. In other words, yep. it, had, it did sorting and it did collating and it did accounting, uh, all those functions. Uh, and the people that were pushing that were sure they were going to... Uh, and win the day back and have life, life. Life would become a lot simpler than having to understand the computer. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. It didn't work. It, it, it full. I think it fulfilled its, its its one function, but it never never led to a line of products. Well, you could always use the general purpose computer right. and tape drive, right. independent tape drives, and and can come out with less money. Okay. Now the next thing I'd like to is, is that all of that? The next thing I'd like to say is quite different. Um, okay. To me, the, the 701 was a magic project. I mean, we were, uh, we were, given, we were given freedom. Uh, Tom Watson did it. He put a ba barrier all around us so we could go tearing ahead, and nobody was allowed to stop us. And that's not how IBM does engineering, generally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not how they do it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so we were able to, to go plowing into this thing and in very, in a very, in very short order come up with a machine that met the, the, the actually worked and actually solved the problem and uh, got IBM into the running in computers, which we couldn't have done if, if, if we hadn't been given all this protection. Mm -hmm. All right, now after that in IBM, so far as any, any project that I've been connected with, the design, the architecture, the engineering design, everything like that, doing it is 90% politics and 10% engineering uh, because you have to, you have to go around Get, uh, get, get people to back what you're doing and get people not to shoot down what you're doing. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's not quite the same. It's not as, it's not quite, you're not quite as free to just go ahead and do a good job. Wow. Until, until, until the, until the personal computer came along. Yes. And the personal computer is the one project that, in which I know the people quite well, who, where, where they have exactly the same thing. Because what, uh, what they did, what IBM did with Estridge, and probably it's done with some other people, but it was certainly done with true. Paley and, and Amdahl and, yeah. and the advanced computer. Yes, yes. yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but well, he was he, he was he was able to to go ahead and do just what he wanted, just what he thought was right, in defiance of any established rules about how you do how you do engineering, how you do anything, and uh, he came up with an enorm enormously successful project. And an interesting thing is, it's a, uh, it's it's much more powerful. I mean, the PC is more powerful than the 701. Uh, the, uh, but uh, it's a, it's still a nice, simple machine like the 701. You know, Matt, uh, context is very important, and uh, and some of what you say conflicts with what I observed over the past ten years. And that is, as IBM had uh, OPD, GSD, uh, uh, and uh, and SPD. Within those divisions, there may have been conflict and competition for resources, but the divisions had a great amount of autonomy in what they could do. In fact, I was critical of the duplication yeah. actually, among divisions. Actually, uh, rather right in the same market, they were yeah, they were competing. Overlapping. Over there is yeah, a slight difference in context. So it depends on when. In the following sense, and that's absolutely right. <coughs> I used to, when I would harangue the engineers, I used to tell them. You guys better enjoy this assignment because it's the last good assignment you're ever going to have. You mean 701? 701. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, it's the best. <laughs> it's, it's the last good assignment you're ever going to have. It's the last assignment you're going to have where you don't have a schedule, where you don't have cost objectives that, you know, are down mm -hmm. to fractions of a penny. I remember coming up <clears throat> with a my dollar needs for buying capital goods, you know, test equipment, tools, and so forth. Blank check. I was going, well, I was going to run it down through the plant uh, controller. Ralph Palmer got a hold of me one day. Don't do that. He called Mr. Phillips, and I took my program right down. He was the president the, of the company. President yeah. of the company at that time, and uh, what, right over everybody's heads. You've got to understand <laughs> that the 701 was very special. Yeah. 
To begin with, the company was a prosperous, successful company in the punch card and calculator area. So we had the money to, to invest. Actually, as I said before, there was one year when Tom Watson invested more money than he had <laughs> yes. or should have had. But today, what you're talking about is not that kind of situation at all. When you talk about a computer today, you're talking about a $30 billion business. And you don't play around. Look, if we had completely failed on the 701, if we had failed and if we had not delivered a single machine, the IBM company would not have hiccuped financially. The big punch card base. Years. The big punch card base. That's because the IBM the IBM company to this day thinks that the 701 was at best a break even, if not a loss, the way they keep their account uh, records. Uh -huh. Okay? They don't count the fact that in the 701 we developed the procedures the factory relationships, the technology, et cetera, that allowed us to do the 702 and the 705 and the 704 to a very large degree. Yep. Okay? Because all of those machines look the same. They're all made out of this, the same chewing gum. Same hardware. Yeah, the same hardware. They're all, they're all made out like that. Same you can't tell one from the other. Uh -huh. Okay? So the technology, the procedure, the engineering practice, et cetera, was all developed on the back of the 701. Yeah. And, and because of that, the accounting is such that it looks like the 701 was at best a break even, maybe a loss. Because they do it in a tight number. Yes. I guess Stretch Buckets. had the same red reputation. Stretch no had the no same flow number. across. Yeah, Stretch, certainly. Stretch yeah. had the same, but, but you know, the 7090 yes. was made from Stretch technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And that was never credited, the profits on the 7090 were, were, were prodigious, and they were never credited against Stretch. Yeah. So the accountants to this day, the bean counters to this day, talk about Stretch <laughs> being a loss to the corporate. Stretch was the best thing that ever happened to IBM, yeah. outside mm -hmm. of the 701. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on Stretch, but my recollection about the 701 and its profitability is different. You're probably in a better position to know than I, but my recollection is that it started out loser, look, looking like a loser, and then, to their, to the infinite astonishment of the people that uh, calculate uh, profits and plan plan yeah. how to make profits, it turned out that uh, it doesn't grind itself to pieces like a card reader or oh, a no, printer, no, no. Uh, and so you could always fix it. And, and so <laughs> suddenly, suddenly it began to make money. Uh, <laughs> well, it did that? make money. Don't misunderstand. But on a program basis, if you count all the engineering and so forth. It, broke it just rest. about broke even. I, think yeah. it just got to the I, I For years I carried an analysis card yeah. in my pocket I that I finally given to Charlie Bash. I said, Charlie, this moth-eaten, faded thing is probably <laughs> nowhere else ever in existence. Take it. And he said, oh my God. <laughs> you, do you know Charlie Bash? Oh, yes, yes. We were working with him. Sure. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. yeah. indeed. But anyhow, it, you know, I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I think the, the, the context in which computers are designed today yeah. are much different. Now, I think when IBM, for example, went into this personal computer project that Mac talks about, yeah. here again, they drew a line around it and said to Estridge, okay, go thou, do it. It's a little different because the personal computer business today is an established business. Never mind that it's in a highly transient state, but you know, yes. there is the Apple company, there is the DEC company, the, you know, the, yes. there's the Zenith company, the everybody's in it. There are 25 companies, I think. Yeah. Maybe 200, more. I think. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> but anyhow, even with respect to that personal computer, if that thing had completely failed, IBM wouldn't have had to draw a deep breath. Wouldn't yeah. have made the money it's making yeah. now. Yeah. You know, yeah. It would have lost an opportunity. Yeah. But it would not have brought the company to its knees. And the same thing can be said of the 701. I don't know. It, yeah, it, it, it would not have brought the There's company to its knees. There's been no future. It, it's, it's oh, that's, that's a different issue. Then, that's that's that, that year. Well, yeah. That year, okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah. They wouldn't have taken the company down the field right now. There's another similarity between the two projects. That is, if IBM had gone into the personal computer business in its standard way, it would have flopped, 
I mean, mm -hmm. it, it could yes. not have competed. It had to yes. do business differently, and it's very, done very, very differently. You can prove that on paper. And uh, yeah, and, and, uh, just, sit down uh, and, and then the same thing was true of the of the seven hundred one. That if we'd gone into the seven hundred one as if it was a as if it was a piece of iron, uh, yes. with a great big diagram uh, and all the different things that uh, those machines had, we wouldn't have succeeded in that business. And then there's still a, there's still another parallel uh, in my mind, and it's one of the reasons I'm going to Florida. Mm -hmm. that, to me, Boca Raton today is like is like Poughkeepsie in the early fifties. There's see. the same spirit and excitement, and people yes. think they're doing something important. I think it's really really great. So, that's a, is that all of Boca or just yeah. the PC area? No, just or? just just Delray Beach. Just uh, the, the the buildings. It's not. In it's Boca not even in Boca. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, they got a lot of there. <laughs> they got a no, they got they got them a super. I, I mean, I mean, we're, we're, they're, they're just kicking all the other stuff out of Boca Raton, and we're taking over Boca now. Oh, well, also, uh, successful the, uh, programs starting <laughs> sellers, addicts, yeah. tie factories, <laughs> supermarkets. No, but they want a detachment, you know, for accounting purposes and everything else. If yeah. you want low cost, detach yourself from from Mama, regardless what the organization is or what the company is. Yeah. And then you can control and you can decide whether you're going to spend a penny here, not be handed your pro rata share of yes. the overhead. That's why you immediately go to a separate building, and the guy can't say it's their fault. No. It's his. <laughs> it's clean and simple. It's a good management technique. And also, you've got to recognize that the PC people today are riding on the backs of the people in Poughkeepsie and Fishkill and Endicott and San Jose and so in, you know Burlington and so forth, who are working toward other products. But there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of fallout. But they just like in the 701 days. We worked on the profits of the punch card machine. You guys are working on the profits of the of the machines that we got in the line now. So to each his own. I mean, yeah. life is different, and and to be absolutely sure, today I can't conceive of IBM doing a 701 project with regard to a computer because it's a 30 billion dollar business. Mm. On yeah. the other hand, they did a PC that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Today, uh, by the way, I meant what I said in that movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> this thing? is a dangerous thing to say, You're so close to the Sloan School. But uh, I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Abernathy that the, the, the uh, uh, from Harvard that the that we have in our business judgments changed our ethic to a rather considerable degree over the last 20 years. And uh, 20 years ago, I can recall entertaining people from the European economic community who were concerned about the European brain drain. And I worked with them for three or four days, a very prestigious group of people. We finally concluded that it was not fiscal policy or tax policy or anything like that. It was not government support of R&D or anything like that, that the big difference that made the brain drain possible and attractive to people was the fact that in this country was where the action was. In this country was where industrial management was driving forward mm -hmm. with things like the 701 and so on. You don't see that today the same, the same way. Mm -hmm. What you see now is more a management of assets kind of mentality and it's, uh, I believe, in, in any event, that the action, a lot of the action has gone out of the United Now, you see exceptions to this, like in small, you know, the minute we put back the uh, 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 stock option, you know, turn the stock option, tax, the option tax, the capital gains tax uh, down right now, to a man. reasonable figure, then all of a sudden startup companies began coming out of the woodwork and all that. No. And it, it, you know it may turn around yet, in, in general. But uh, uh, I think that that was a big difference between then and now. We are not we are not managing businesses today in the style we managed them 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd like to uh, close by asking one question about what we do next. We, we really planned, uh, as I think you, some of you know, because we had a lot of correspondence about dates, we planned to do two days, two sessions on this, and uh, we like to keep the team small like they are today, 
uh, this has been a very good coherent team and you know we've talked a lot about the engineering about the production and so on what what do you suggest that we missed and who are the people we're going to get and what, what should be a, a second session that looks at it from a different perspective well, I think you're if you're going to have Birkenstock and Heard uh, you would get a significantly different um, perspective, I think. Mm -hmm. Because they would represent the thing more from the marketing general management area. It might even be interesting to bring a, an old financial guy in, you know, somebody... You mean like Hillary? Yeah, like Hillary. He's retired, he uh -huh. lived through... Uh... He lived through it. Yeah. There are any number, you know. You could ask. You could ask Birkenstock and Heard. Black. You might uh, talk about McDowell. Mm -hmm. McDowell is still alive. <coughs> and, uh, at that time. He he lives down in uh, in Naples, Florida. Mm -hmm. He also has a summer place. Yeah. I believe he has a summer place in, in the Thousand Islands somewhere, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure of that. He might be living year round in Florida right now. But they would certainly know how to get hold of it. I mean, if you're setting yeah. something. McDowell, if you've got to understand, was the vice president of engineering during 701 days. Mm -hmm. Birkenstock was the head of the future demands department or whatever yeah. that became product planning. Yeah. Heard was the applied science guy. I suppose if you... If you could get Learson to join, Learson has just retired from the board. He used to be chief executive officer before he retired. Hmm. And he was the U.S. ambassador to the Law of the Sea Treaty oh, yes. negotiation. Mm -hmm. So, Harvard boy. Yeah. yeah. But if you were to do this, I, I would suggest you'd probably have to do this in White Plains yeah. to get well, these guys. Sure. Yeah. That was what we originally planned. Yeah. But then when it turned out none of the yeah. White Plains people were available at those dates. Yeah. And this was... uh, but I would think if you got, you know, Learson was very much involved with the 701. Mm, more during the two. He took over. Oh, wait, that, let me finish. He, okay. he, he was very much involved in the 701 during the short strokes, you know, just about the time we announced it. Mm. I mean, he came into my, and sat in my office and, and priced the goddamn machine and gave the numbers to the machine and, mm. Mm -hmm. and said, you know, no, that's not enough for the card reader, double it. That's Ben. Okay. He was a terrific leader. He was the, uh, he was the IBM sales manager at the time. Okay. Uh, he subsequently became director of EDPM, what, what happened was that when, when uh, at a later point, when Watson saw that we really had to go in the EDPM, the electronic data processing direction, and when he saw that we had to, by all means, get a factory turned around, get the financial people turned around, get the salespeople turned around, and make sure that we didn't duplicate the failures that UNIVAC had had, you know, in Appliance Park, that kind of thing. He went to Learson and said, you're on special assignment, you're now director of EDPM, and uh, you got nobody reporting to you, you've got only your backbone and your strength and your, and, you know, go do it. And he did it. He set up an office in the lab, he spent two or three days a week there. And at that time, I was uh, the, I was the, uh, this manager was, of, of EDPM engineering. This it was, was all the yeah. 700 series engineering was under me, mm -hmm. and so in a sense, I worked for for Ralph Palmer. He he, he was the one who gave me gave me increases, uh, or things like that. But uh, uh, also, I was working for Learson, and there wasn't any question about who I was really working for. <laughs> Learson was a very dynamic guy. He'd, he'd give you an assignment, which was somewhat beyond. You figure that there's no way you were going to achieve that, and uh, but. He, he, you, uh, par partly you were inspired by him, and partly you were afraid of him. And uh, you'd go ahead and you'd knock yourself out, and you'd finally achieve this. And you'd come in and you'd, 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 you'd describe to him what, what you'd done, and he'd be listening. You know, a lot of people don't listen, but Lerson was listening. And he would ask questions which indicated that he understood in depth 
the the problems you 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 would you would you would uh, uh, solved. You'd be so so happy about the fact that he appreciated this great thing that you'd done. You wouldn't notice uh, that you had just accepted as an assignment to do it something twice as difficult. You'd walk out of the <laughs> office. Uh, <laughs> I remember the day. Well, well, anyway, if you could get if you could vet if you could get those four guys. Yeah. If you could get Learson, McDowell, Birkenstock, and Hurd. They would give you a, a very different perspective on this. But none mm -hmm. of those guys are really engineering, even McDowell. Yeah. Okay? I mean, you know, McDowell was vice president of engineering. He was way up there and in yeah. New York. And, 590 you know, Madison. Yeah. Yeah. We ran to him. Uh -huh. I mean, we went there yeah. most of the time. Yeah. I was trying to work in a customer or two. Uh, and I was looking over this list of customers that were at this school. The only one I can see uh, is Kolsky. Who is now an IBM employee? But well, he was, has been for years. Yeah, for years. But he, he really, I mean, he during the whole 701 period, he was a customer. Yes. So was Willard Baricius. Yeah, but Kolsky is a little more. Sound. Has more yeah. pizzazz. Yeah. I mean, he he expresses himself much more. You could invite Kolsky in with this crowd because Nat's absolutely right. I mean, Kolsky doesn't care whether he's sitting with the Pope or the President or Chairman of the Board. He speaks right. his mind, and you know, he know he's his own man. Yeah. And he speaks very well. Yeah. Thinks yeah. well. Yeah. He's a, he's an IBM fellow in the uh, Palo Alto Scientific Center. Uh huh. And I can give you his phone number if you want. But that would that that would give you a much much different perspective. Yeah. Was he a customer at that time? Yes. Or a customer. With customer. He was a, he was at Los Alamos. Right, Los, Los Alamos. Alamos. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where the I remember the work. ones from uh, John Lowe from Douglas. Yeah. Lord Ware and. Paul Armour from Rand. Yeah. Herb Gross from GE. Yeah. Herb Gross, Gross probably wouldn't be a, very much of a contributor. Well, not that he came but with us, you know, in military products after yeah. that yeah. experience. Yeah. Then he left it. The fire news. Yes. I was uh, in uh, military he, he products. Announced he was the yeah. only person that was actually ever fired by both TJ Sr. and TJ Jr. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he didn't believe it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard to convince of so anything. He came back to Charlie Bishop. He's a good man. He's a very good man. Herb. Yeah. Herb is a great guy. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you very much. This is a marvelous afternoon. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel really kind of drained. Much. I wouldn't know what else to talk about. Yeah, <coughs> I've learned a lot. Yeah. And I think you've really done a superb presentation. Thank well, you. you've been most gracious and uh, and generous with us. Yeah. From the right. standpoint of letting us ramble on pretty much whatever we wanted to talk about. Well, that's about. exactly what we want. Yeah. 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 Four or four old friends. They haven't seen much. <laughs> we really haven't seen each other for years. Wouldn't you know. be the last yes. time. <laughs> well, we met last night and it had been like eight years since we'd seen one another. Really? Well, yeah. well, you get scattered all over the country. And, uh, yes. This couple, maybe all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all except Nat retired. The humble mm. scientist is still working. And having fun. Yes. I'm working hard, fun, I can see. Going to Boca. Going to move to Boca. Yeah. Are you going to move to Boca? Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to retire and get in your boat and go around the world? No, uh, what? On the 20th of August, Louise and I are going to get in our boat and sail to Florida. And uh, I hope you make it around Hatteras. Oh, well, we're we're going behind. We're going behind Hatteras. In the inland. Uh, I mean, uh, you can't go behind Hatteras, can you? Yeah, sure. In the inland channel. Man, yeah. Florida. I thought even on the inland, you had no. there was one section you had to go outside. Oh yeah, you have to go outside New Jersey, for example. Well, what we're going to do is take the first run. Uh, directly from Duxbury to the entrance of the Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. That's where the crew that's experienced and knows how to stand watch. And then uh, with uh, other types of crew, we're going to make it through the inland waterway down as far as Cape Fear. No, Car Moorhead City. That's that's about it. Well, that's the second week. First week <coughs> is that. Se second week. Then we're going to, at Moorhead City, we're going to pick up another uh, high, high, high performance crew and start on the inland waterway and then go from Cape Fear to Charleston. Mm. And, and then Louise and I are going to sail alone well, along the shore of uh, Georgia and uh, North Carolina, South Carolina and Georgia. Then we're going to pick up some more crew at the northern part of Florida and sail down the rest of the waterway. Six weeks. <laughs> They'll have a new model out. <laughs> sail around the world. They'll fill that job before you get there now. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, my schedule right now, I've got a 7.30 or 7.45 flight. Uh -huh. So I can, I can uh, you know, I don't know where you're going to be, but I, I can be with you for at least a few minutes yeah. between now and then. Uh, well, good. I, uh, we still have coffee and uh, drinks here, and you've been in front of the hot lights, and maybe the best thing is to just... Uh, <laughs> You're driving, so you're free. Of, um, it's being catered, so I don't know the, how back to that damn easily we can move it up. Probably we could move it up half an hour. What time is it scheduled? It's, well, it's scheduled to eat at 6.30, but we, gather, we can gather we an hour and before that. and sit. And, what? Why don't we call to find out? You can try. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a number of phone calls waiting. I'm uh, nothing terribly <laughs> urgent. I could intercept. I'm sure. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much, thank Doctor. You. <coughs> oh, boy. You, you know, it's uh, most sincere now. It was just the two of us. If you think, well, no, if you think we'll run... Some, no, okay. uh, Richard will be there. All right. I thought if you thought we'd pretty well run dry, why, if you wish to change...